Yo, what is up guys, it is Cody. In this video, we're gonna be going over what I'm running on my Stamina Templar for the Horns of the Reach patch. We are running Slime Crawl, Ravaging, and Bone Pirate. The way this is achieved, we are running three Ravaging pieces of armor and two weapons, making sure that we are have five on the front bar. You really only need five on the front bar. The Bone Pirate is achieved by having the jewelry and two armor pieces. If you want to be really min-max, I prefer to have the medium armor pieces as the smaller armor pieces so you can get more armor. Slime Crawl. Now, see this is a 5 heavy, 2 medium build. And the only way you can run this build is if your Undaunted pieces are heavy. So I'm sorry if you guys can't run this build. There are other ways to make sure you can run the build. They won't be as strong, but some things you can do are wearing a Ravaging Jewelry piece. They are healthy jewelry pieces, but you will lose at least 1k stam, but you'll be able to run the build. And you'll still at least need one piece heavy, so that'll make it easier for you guys to run. I've also messed around with Selene's. As you can see, Selene's is still a viable option. It gives you 1k max stam, and it procs a lot of physical damage. There's like a telegraph now, but it still hits pretty much all the time. Personally, I like Slime Crawl because I'd rather just do damage when I know it's coming. I know you can kind of see Selene's, but I like Slime Crawl because the One Piece has been changed this patch to Weapon Crit, and that has really helped me um, increase my Weapon Critical. I actually dropped Thief because I think my critical rating right now is about pretty damn good for me to drop Thief. Now, I did have a training shoulder, don't worry about that. Try to get all in pen, guys. That's the best trait right now for PvP. We're running two weapon damage, one reduced cost. I follow like the same exact jewelry setup glyph for all my heavy armor builds. I'm always going two weapon damage, one reduced cost. This reduced cost is basically going to make sure your skills don't cost way too much. Now, the weapons have changed. I have ran this build in the past and we used to use Sharpen. Now, Sharpen is still fine. You can still run Sharpen. But I find Infuse to be one of the more used traits this patch. Now, not a lot of people use Infuse yet, but I think since... It has been buffed this patch. It is really strong. Now we have Oblivion damage and Weapon damage. I find this the best way to run it. You can always run an Infused back bar, but as a stamp bar, your rotation usually centers around Light Attack Rending, Light Attack Power Light, and Light Attack Jabs. So you're not going to want to switch to your back bar to proc your Weapon damage enchant. It's too clunky on a stamp bar. The Oblivion enchant is going to proc all the time, and the Weapon damage is going to proc all the time, ensuring that you have both of these glyphs up at all times. So having 452 weapon damage almost forever is just really strong. The back bar, if you guys are curious, you can run either a Maelstrom. You can run a Maelstrom defending, powered, anything you want really. You don't even need a Maelstrom. The fourth piece of Ravaging is a weapon damage, as you can see. So if you ran a Ravaging back bar, you would basically get the same exact thing as a Maelstrom, but you'd lose 60 weapon damage, but you could also use a Glyph. So if you guys want to use a Ravaging Back Bar, by all means, go ahead. You're probably going to be better off doing that because you can run a Glyph instead of Poisons, but you'll lose 60 weapon damage. If I was going to think of the best trait for the Back Bar on a Stamplar, I would say to go either Defending or Powered. Usually I go Infused on the Back Bar, but like I said, everything that you're proccing is on the Front Bar. You don't really need to proc anything on the Back Bar. That's kind of clunky. I mean, in 1v1s, yeah, it will be good. You could put, like, a crushing enchantment, reduce their armor or something. But for open world, defending or powered is probably your best bet. I honestly think powered would be better to make sure your rally is an insured crit, which is a lot more benefit, like a higher heal, I mean, instead of just a stinky physical and spell resistance. I think powered would be a lot better. So I might go grab myself that. So... We are a red guard. I was a I was an orc before, and I found that the sustain wasn't as good as a red guard. Red guard's always gonna beat orc in terms of sustain, and I'm a heavy build. I have plenty of damage. I don't really need the orc extra like the little bit of extra damage on an orc or the sprint speed. I don't really need that. I also liked having a higher max stamp pull. You can go orc by all means. You don't need to change your race, but with these types of builds, I try to shy away from repentance. Because there are going to be moments in time in Cyrodiil where you're not going to kill anyone. And it's going to be a straight tank, a long period of time of tanking and just waiting for the right time to kill. 
rendering this skill useless for the majority of the fights. Now, if you are playing with another person, throw that bad boy on. You're going to be using this a lot if you're with another person. But for solo, I'd say drop repentance and use that skill as a use a slot as a flex spot. Now, there's two different things I'd put there. I'd either put rearming trap or razor cow chops. Now, if you don't know, razor cow chops has been reduced several patches ago by a lot. As you can see, this is only 3k. Now, that's pretty expensive, but in terms of the utility of this skill and how useful it is, and how much damage it does this patch, it's pretty damn good. Look at rending slashes, guys. Rending slashes is a really powerful dual dot, right? And it does 12,000 over 9 seconds. That's th 1,300 damage a second, and it can crit, right? Caltrops says 2,000 physical damage every second. So if you think about it, Razor Caltrops is beating Rending Slashes in terms of a dot. And it snares for 70% for 3 seconds as soon as you drop it. That's the really big part of it. Templars already have Purify. Pretty much anyone standing in your Purify is snared already. So I'm not really counting the snare, the first part of the snare. But if you don't happen to have a Purify down for whatever reason, this is also doing the same thing as Purify. It's snaring people for 30% the entire time really great ability you can really take people off you for instance you get cc'd you can pop a shuffle and then throw cow chops and you can get to line of sight pretty quick since they'll be lingering behind with that 70 percent snare what's better rearming trap or cow chops cow chops is a bigger dot and you have some utility with it rearming trap is the same thing one you're, you're going to be doing more damage to a vamp or a werewolf by 20 percent with this and you're gonna get minor force and the dot is only okay i'm not sure what i would use yet i haven't used cow chops in pvp to be honest but i'm going to try both i have used rearming trap though and they're both solid options guys we are running the warrior like i said i think our weapon critical rating is fine on both our bars i think 42.5 percent is about ideal you could go thief and hit 49.5 but honestly i'd rather go 230 weapon damage you want to hit around 40% on stand builds, in my opinion. 50 for like group builds, 40 is perfect. Around anywhere between 40 and 50 is good, in my opinion. We are stage 3 vamp, and we're running Dubious Cameron Throne. And here are the stats. Now look, the weapon damage doesn't look too appealing, but I'm going to show you after we go over. I'm going to show you actually right now. So watch how easily I can gain my weapon damage. One rending slash and a couple jab rotations okay so this is just with the weapon damage glyph we're already at 3600 and the weapon damage glyph is always up now ravaging if you're not if you don't like a build where you have to gain your weapon damage then by all means you can go automaton or something like that or spriggans but ravaging procs pretty frequently like i just procced it in one jab right there and that's what we're looking at for weapon damage 4468 so Here's a jab tooltip, and here's a dawnbreaker. 18k dawnbreaker, and about 1700, almost 1800 jabs. It's gonna proc quite a lot, as you can see. Like, I'll just do some rotations for you guys. It it procs pretty often. For some reason, of course, since we're doing the video, it's not. All right, there we go. It's it's pretty good. If you do heavy attacks, there's a more chance for you to proc them. And that is not the fully buff weapon damage, since we do, since we are running heavy armor, we're missing 200 weapon damage from wrath. So 4,600 is with the weapon damage and ravaging. You'll find that your weapon damage glyphs up a lot higher. Like you'll you'll see it a higher uptime on your weapon damage glyph of ravaging. But basically, I would wait to do ultimates on depending on if you have your weapon damage glyph and your ravaging proc. So don't dawnbreaker right now. Wait till you have both your buffs up. Like right now would be a good time to dawnbreaker since you have both buffs up. Unless it's like an emergency and you know you can get the kill. That's how I usually time my ultimates. Uh, the bars, we're running Rending, Biting Jabs, Binding Javelin, Power of the Light, Resolve of Vigor, Dawn Breaker. This is our Dot. This is our main damage ability. This is our CC. This is our Burst skill. You put this after you put a Dot, and in 6 seconds, if you do enough damage, or you time a Dawn Breaker right before this, it'll explode for a lot. Back bar, we're running Restoring Focus. This is our Flex Spot. Like I said, you can run Repentance, Raise Your Cow Chops, or Rearming Trap. Shuffle. Send a ritual, rally, and remembrance. Now, you guys are probably wondering, what the hell is this skill? Okay, so this is a Templar ultimate that costs 120. I usually run a defensive ultimate on my back bar for 
pretty much any class in the game at the moment. And what this does is you can either channel it and get a pretty big ass heal every second for four seconds, but you can't move and you get major protection. So if you're doing this ultimate, you are not dying. You can't move, but you're not dying, right? So you'll get regen for four seconds basically and not die. And then you'll have to make a move. You can have time to think or you can cancel it by either block blocking or swapping. And basically what you'll do is you'll gain the major protection for 10 seconds. In my opinion, that's a solid buff. The resto ult, the reason this is so powerful is it not only gives you a heal, but it also gives you major protection along with major force. And the major protection is the part that makes all those damn sorks and anyone who uses it so tanky. So I find this ultimate to be pretty damn good. Is it OP? I don't know. I haven't used it much yet. There is also another defensive ult called Empowering Sweep. It's technically the same thing and it costs cheaper. So if you want to use this ult, by all means, go for it. But if you're a person who wants to use Crescent instead of Dawnbreak on the front bar, there is your option. But yeah, you would have to hit at least... You would have to hit like four people if you wanted major protection, pretty much, since this does also give damage reduction. I don't know what's better, but I'm going to mess with two and I'll let you guys know what is better in the, in the end. All right, we're going to go over CP and then that pretty much will wrap up the build. I'm just going to scroll through. You guys can pause whenever you'd like. Now, I am a person to usually never put points into Blessed, but if you, by all means, if you guys find that your survivability is lacking because your heals are too weak, put some points into Blessed. Go for it. But this is what my CP is right now. I think it's pretty even. I'm not trying to put too many points into one tree because there are diminishing returns. Now, there are going to be trees like this that have a lot, and the only reason I'm doing that is because they're just so powerful. Like, honestly, I could take 2% out of this and get more impen. But I just find the damage reduction to just be better. It's This is like one of the most powerful CP trees right now. And that's it for the CP. I do hope you guys enjoy this build. I'll be playing it on stream soon. So if you guys would like to see that, my stream and everything will be in the description down below. Anyways, guys, it's been Cody. Hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you later.